today is the day where we finally get to get the freeze dryer rocking and rolling and I'm so excited if all goes well. Um, so we've had the freeze dryer for about a week and a half now and things just kept coming up and getting in the way and full-time job with overtime going on and all this stuff. So but I am determined to get this done. It's a Saturday. Um, I should have the majority of the day to work on this along with a few things out with our garden. We're trying to get the cover crops going. So between the two, I should be able to get this going today. Um, all right, so to get started, we need to get the machine all like set up and ready to go. So to help me out, I've got my owner's manual. So I'm gonna walk through this step by step with you guys so that you know that I'm following the proper steps here and we're making sure that we do everything right. Um, so the first thing here is it recommends that you wait 24 hours before actually doing anything with it and getting it going. I've waited more than 24 hours, so I think I'm good here. Um, it's also been in its resting spot here for about a week. So we did um, fix things around in this room about a week ago. So it's been more than 24 hours. Okay, so the first step, uh, the official first step, is to make sure the freeze jar is on a flat level surface and it's stable, and then it's in a cool, dry, and clean location, okay? So we've got all of that taken care of here, and it's on a good, flat, stable surface. Next thing is to check the rubber door gasket to make sure it's clean, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and open the door. Now, just a little side note here, I have decided to leave this plastic protection on for now, just until I have everything running and the freeze dryer is working great. Then I'll go ahead and peel this off. Um, but that's why maybe it looks a little blurry on your screen. It's just because of this protective liner here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the freeze dryer. And it just spins about a half turn there. And this is the rubber gasket that we need to make sure is clean. Um, so it recommends just only using water and no like harsh chemicals or anything like that. So I've got my bowl of water here and my 100% cotton cloth. And so I'm just gonna use this to wipe it down. While I'm doing this, step number three is to make sure the inside of the door is nice and clean as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I'm at it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that we wanna make sure everything is dry before we run the freeze dryer. So everything that I'm doing here, I'm gonna go back and just wipe it down with a dry cloth as well. And then while I'm putting the oil in the pump and preparing everything else, it'll also have plenty of time to air dry also. So I'm not too worried about that, but it is important to make sure everything is dry. All right, so I've got the inside of the door clean and I've got the rubber gasket clean. Now what I'm gonna do is, now this is not in the owner's manual, but I've read reviews and other comments by other people that you should pull the tray out and wipe the inside of the drum as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this gasket but I'm gonna dry it first. It's already pretty much air dry. Yeah, it's like the towel is like sticking to it because it's so dry. Okay, and then I'm gonna just pull this off, okay? So this literally, you just pull and slide it. No big deal at all. It goes right back on just as easy. So I'll set that aside, okay. Now this is a little bit of a more intimidating part for me. This is pretty heavy. I did kind of a run through last night as I was practicing. Um, well, I was actually trying to film last night and do this last night, but my son had kids over and they were just on the other side of this wall and they're teenage boys and they were super loud and it just was impossible to make it a good film where you could actually hear me good without all the background noise. So I have done this before. Um, and it is kind of heavy and it's long. I mean, it goes all the way back there and I'm worried about scratching the drum. And so it's kind of an awkward little step here. 
But what my plan is, is to slide it out and then just kind of place it here so I can do a somewhat quick wipe down of the trays if I can get my hand in there and also of the drum itself. So I'm just gonna slide my arm all the way back. And I'm just gonna set it here. I just don't wanna scratch the front of the freeze dryer, of course. There we go, okay. So as you can see, the cord is pretty long. So it, there's plenty of room, it even has plenty of slack for me to come and set it out like this just fine, okay? So here's the clip. So I'm going to push down on that and then it just pulls out like that. And then I can take this cord and I'm just gonna drape it kind of over the door like that. And I'm just gonna wipe the inside of the drum down um, just nice and quick and easy. And just give it, again, I'm just using water. And I'm just giving it a quick wipe down. Okay, now I'm going to let that air dry for a minute. I'll drape this back over. And then I'm going to wipe down the trays. Now the trays, you have to make sure you get those in a certain way. And I'll go over that more when um, you can see the front of the trays and I put it back in the drum. The thing is, is to make sure that the trays don't get flipped and upside down. <clears throat> so, so I'll show you kind of an easy way to double check that. Okay, so if I can't get the back because the back is completely closed off, you can see that. Okay, so I can't wipe that way. So I feel like I've wiped the trays the best that I can. Now, before I put this back into the drum, I'm gonna dry the trays. Because again, it is super important to just make sure everything is dry. And I'm not able to get all the way back in there. I'm really just doing the best I can with how small of a space there I have to work with between each tray. So now what I'm going to do is connect the wire back to the plug here. And then I'm going to dry out the drum real quick, make sure that's all good to go. And then we'll get the tray back in the drum. All right. So again, this just plugs in clip on top and just push until it clicks. Okay, very soft click there. I hope you heard that. All right, so now I'm gonna dry the drum. And it didn't air dry as fast as the rubber gasket did, so it does need a good drying. One thing while I'm thinking about it is make sure in between like your freeze drying runs and cycles and all that, Make sure you leave this door open um, so that it doesn't get moldy in there. It's kind of like a front washer, washing machine. Um, you don't wanna leave that closed and sealed and lock any moisture in there. You need to have it open so it can air dry and not get moldy. I have seen horrible pictures of moldy freeze dryers. The entire thing is just caked in mud, or mud, <laughs> mold. So um, make sure that you don't make that mistake. And I sure as heck hope I don't either. Okay, I might put like a reminder, little sticky note or sign or something just on the side wall here, just to make sure. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and lift it up and get it back in there. Um, so I'm gonna try and keep the wire up because I wanna make sure I get it all the way back. If you notice this part, it could kind of cause the, the trays to not slide back all the way. So we do have to be careful with that. So I'm gonna try and keep it up for a minute here while I slide it back in. Whoops, don't do that. I'm just trying to stay out of the camera view as much as possible. Okay, I don't want this cord to be stuck up here. I need it back there. 
All right. <clears throat> so again, I'm gonna use my arm to go back with it here, just because my arm is small enough to be able to do that. And I'm trying to prevent the scratching on the drum. Okay. Okay, so everything looks good there. I'm just making sure the cord is not, because it's kind of under that back corner of the trays. So I'm just kind of trying to tuck it back in there. And then I just want to make sure the tray is level as much as possible here. So that looks pretty good to me. I hope I'm right. Um, also, I've seen pictures and things from people where this um, liner here has come off. So I just am trying to push on that, make sure it's staying where it needs to be. There is an orange heating mat on the bottom of each shelf. So just make sure that you're not putting the trays directly on top of the orange heating mat. Um, okay, so there's that. Now while I'm at it here, I'm gonna just go ahead and load my trays in, just so I can show you guys how that looks as well. I will need to take them out here pretty soon when we do the bread run, but I'm kind of excited to see how this all looks when it's all put together. So I'm gonna slide those in. I did get the large freeze dryer, as you probably have already noticed that. I do have five trays. I wanted to just maximize every second using the freeze dryer as I possibly could. And most likely this is the only one I'm ever gonna get. I would love to have a second someday, but I'm not counting on it. I am very thrilled and excited just to have the one. All right, so there's my five trays. I'm so excited. Okay, so now I'm gonna get the rubber gasket on. And it just slides right on, just like that. So easy. I love it. Okay, so step number four is to put oil in the vacuum pump. So I went ahead and got one of the Premier oil pumps. And you only have to change the oil every 20 to 30 times that you run the machine. So anyway, here is the Premier pump. Let's scoot it over here a little bit. All right, so how we do the oil in the Premier pump is we're gonna unscrew this demister, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this, and notice I have not plugged it in yet. I just wanna be careful that it doesn't just kinda of fall over, because it is a little bit on the heavy side here up top, so it just kinda of tips. And I'm gonna to turn to page 18 in the manual so again, we can just follow along, make sure we're doing everything right. So first off with unscrewing this, this is where the oil is going to go is just right down in this hole. And then we'll be able to see on this, I'll show you this um, guide here that tells us how full the oil level is. I notice there's a ring right here that's loose. So I'm going to make sure that stays put. Um, okay, this is called, make sure I get it right here. This is the gas ballast switch. Okay, so there is an O and a C of where it can be. So O is for open, C is for closed, and it mentions here in bold writing to make sure that the gas ballast is always open in order for the pump to work correctly. Okay, so I've got it on the O, it comes on the O. I never mess with that until now, but I'm making sure it's on the O, okay? Um, so I've got that done. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill up the oil to the correct level. I've got my funnel, so I'm going to use my funnel to help me make sure I don't make a mess of the oil. So down here is the gauge where I'm going to be watching that level of the oil as I'm pouring. We want it to be halfway, so there is a longer line there between the max fill and the minimum fill. So we're going to go for that line right there. I'm just going to carefully pour this while I'm trying to watch that level. So you can see as that level is rising, 
as I'm pouring. I'm not seeing it rise all that much while I'm pouring a lot, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But I've poured a lot and it's not really rising. Okay, there we go. Oh dear. Now it's rising quick. <clears throat> And we're almost there. I'm going to let it settle just for a minute and see how much more it rises. All right, so I've just been letting it sit before I pour any more in because of the way it just quickly all of a sudden rose up. And so I didn't want to pour any more in until I saw where it kind of settled at. And it looks like we got lucky. It settled right on that middle line that we were looking for. So I'm not going to add any more oil. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'm glad that I didn't just keep pouring. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the demister back on. Make sure this uh, ring thing is right centered pretty good. I could just put it right there. That's where it's supposed to go. So I'll just go ahead and do that and then just kind of hold it with my finger until I get that started. Okay, so now what we need to do is connect the hose from this point right here and then connect it right here on the freeze dryer. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. It just kind of pulls off and I'm going to take my hose here and it doesn't matter which end because they're exactly the same. So go ahead and screw that on there and just finger tight. This came on the freeze dryer for part of its packaging. I'm just going to pull that off and set that aside. And then here's the part where I'm going to connect the other end of the hose. Okay, so just finger tight. Okay, so the next part is to connect the freeze dryer power cord to the back of the freeze dryer. So I did spin it a little bit more very carefully, but here is our panel. So here we have our on and off switch. We're gonna go ahead and connect it to this location right here. So I'm gonna flip it over and make sure the two are on top and the one is on bottom. And go ahead and plug that in. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and connect this part to my outlet. Now it does require a 20 amp circuit and a 110 outlet. Oh my word, it's a different outlet. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. <clears throat> so I think, aha, that's what that's for. Okay, so I went to go plug this into the outlet and I noticed, and it wouldn't go in. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute, but the reason why it's got the three prong system, but one of them on the top is turned sideways. And my outlet that we had planned on using for that doesn't work. It's not that style, but luckily my husband installed an outlet that does fit that right next to it. And it also has a designated, um, 20 amp circuit as well. Cause it was for the washer, but we're just going to switch because it doesn't matter which is on which one, as long as they each have their own circuit. So I'll show you how I tried to plug that in. Um, I've got the washer plugged into this one now, but see how when I try to plug that in, this one on this side, and I don't, do not want to get electrocuted, um, but this one on this side is sideways and that just doesn't work. So we've got this one over here that, and I've always wondered why these outlets have that little jaunt off to the side. So I'm getting my answer right now and I'm gonna get that plugged in so it'll work correctly. Okay, so we've got that connected. Next thing it says is to connect the vacuum pump power cord to the rear panel of the freeze dryer. So I'm just gonna hurry and undo this little tie here. <clears throat> and then we'll plug that in. 
Okay. Next is to make sure the power switch on the vacuum pump is in the on position. So the switch for that is just right here next to the power cord going out. So I'm just going to make sure it's on, which is the I kind of a marking instead of the O. So now it's turned on. Okay, so I've got the machine kind of rotated back the other way now so that I can show you guys the hose real quick. So over here we have the draining tube that is for the valve for the air and the water. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut this zip tie off. Okay, so now I can just take this tube and I'm just going to drop it into my bucket here that I have just up on a stool so that it's high enough for the drain tube to reach in there just fine. However, once I get this freeze dryer actually in place, I am a little worried that it's not going to be long enough, so I might have to boost that stool up a little bit, but we'll try it there for now and kind of see. While we've got this opened up, I do also want to show you the drain valve. So I'm going to pull this out. That was a little scary. Just making sure I'm doing everything right here. But there's the valve right there. Okay. So that valve is supposed to be perpendicular. There we go. for it to be turned the correct way. All right, so we've got that valve closed now. I feel like it needs to go a little bit more, but it just won't. So I'm gonna leave it there, leave it sticking out so I can easily switch that valve when I need to. And now I'm going to rotate the machine and get it back in place. Okay, so I've got the machine back where I need it to be. Um, the next step is to make sure that the door is latched and closed completely. So it, the latch here has a two-stage process. There it latches it, and then here as we keep going, it seals it, and it really tightens it up against this rubber gasket. So if you look closely here on the rubber seal, we can see a line that goes all the way around, and I'm just checking to make sure I can see that line good all the way around the door, and I can. So um, that's a good sign. And then when that vacuum pump kicks on, it'll help create that vacuum seal as well. Okay, so the next thing it mentions here is, it, uh, I'm just gonna read step number 12. It says, as described in previous steps, it is your responsibility to make sure the door is closed properly. The drain valve is closed, which is that perpendicular valve over there that we did on the hose and the hose connecting the vacuum pump to the freeze dryer is connected. So we've got that hose connected as well. The successful functioning of the vacuum pump depends on these steps being performed properly. Okay. So crucial steps there. So we want to make sure we got those, which we do. And then next is turn on the freeze dryer by pressing the switch to the on position. Guys, I just got the butterflies. <laughs> I know that's cheesy, but I have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. And going through these steps while filming and all of that has taken a lot of time. So I'm excited. Um, so the I is on, the O is off, and it's located back there on that panel where we connected the plug. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this switch. So here we go, our moment of truth. We'll know by the screen coming on. So if I can find the switch, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I really shouldn't be. I'm excited. I just want it to work. Okay, here we go. I see a green light. So that's good. And there's our screen. I'm so excited. I hope you guys, when you are setting yours up, I hope you're as excited as I am. So we have to perform this little test. So it says, press the circle leaf logo in the upper left corner. Okay, so here's our little leaf icon up here. Uh, this will take you to a functioning testing screen. Toggle on the freeze by pressing the on off button icon. 
You should hear the refrigeration condenser turn on. Close the door and the drain valve. Let it freeze for 30 minutes or more. Okay, so I have been running this for just over 30 minutes. It's probably been about 35 minutes or so. Um, the guideline said 30 minutes or more. So I went with just a little bit more there. Now it says to toggle the vacuum to on by pressing the on off button icon. So here's our vacuum. Okay, so there it turned on. It took it kind of a minute to register it. But it's got a countdown going for me, so that's nice. So I'm gonna watch that. You hear the pump come on. Okay, so I've made sure everything is right with the pump. It is in the open position as it should be. And now it says to just wait 20 to 30 minutes and the pressure reading will decrease until it is below 500. So this was up really high when we first started. It was like in the 600 thousands. And so now it's dropping rather quickly here. So we'll see about how long that takes us to drop down to about 500. Okay, so we're below 3,000 now. It's going really fast. It says our room temp is 89 degrees. It said that the entire time. I'm gonna put a thermometer in here, but we know it's not 89 degrees in here. Um, so I'm not sure what that is about or if that'll kind of fix itself as the machine is on longer, but it is definitely not 89 degrees in here. I would guess about 70 degrees is what we're at right now. Okay, we're around 1500 now. One thing I want to point out is I left the trays in during this testing cycle and I wish I had had them out because then I could have been kind of preparing my bread run a little bit easier. I can still do it without it just fine because I would have just prepped it on like cookie sheets and then transferred the bread over. But just a little heads up, you may want to keep your trays out while you run this test. And while that 30 minute time frame was running, um, I could have been preparing my bread for the bread run. Okay, we're under a thousand. And we're only six minutes into it. Okay, we are now below 700. Okay, we're in the 500s now, we're getting close. Okay, we are quickly approaching our 500 mark. It does say to let it get below 500. So I'm gonna let it go just a little bit below that. And then we can go ahead and press done. And when I press done, that will automatically toggle the freeze and the vacuum back to the off position. We are officially below 500. And it's just over 10 and a half minutes. So that was pretty awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And there we go. And we are back to our home screen. If 500 or lower is not reached, check for air leaks and repeat the process. Okay, so now it says you can now open the drain valve. This will release the pressure and allow the door to be opened. You are now ready to start your first batch. I'm so excited. Okay, so back in the corner is my valve. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that switched over.
Okay, so now that we have that testing done, we can go ahead and prepare for our bread run. But before we do that, I want to do a very important thing because now that it seems to be running good, I'm going to go ahead and take this off so I can just have my clear view of everything going on inside now. We'll peel it off the top. And we'll peel this thing back. I do like that it pro provides some protection here, but I really want to be able to see, I want to be able to see what's going on inside. Okay, awesome. And there it is, much more clear. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the door now. We've released that pressure. And there we go. And it is cold in here. I am feeling the coolness coming out. So I'm gonna to touch the trays. They are definitely cold. Not like freeze my hand kind of a cold, but it is, it's very cold. So that's exciting. It's just more uh, assurance that it's working. Okay, so before I run the machine, I wanna go ahead and actually customize my machine name. So to do that, we just come up here and click on system name, and then it just says type system name. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we click save. And there we have it, Root Homestead.